We're gonna pour the hole and the motor curb all at the same time. Well, if we do that, how are you gonna know where the hole is to set your post? All we're gonna do is just put some marks right where the center of the hole is. So that way we know where to stab the post. We need to finish building our gate post stiffener. So the stiffener that goes inside the vinyl post that we're gonna hang our gate off of. And what we have there is we have a two and three eighths SS40 post with two two and three eighths five by five high density post stiffeners. Now, the trick for this, I'm just gonna take a little one inch self tapping screw I've got the high density post stiffener. I've got one right at the top and I have the other one set right above the top of the bottom of the, huh? right at the top of the bottom hole, if that makes sense. So we're just gonna put a little self tapper in right here. And this is gonna connect the two together so that I can just set one post instead of two. So now that we have our first post set, what we can do is we can either go down to our corner and set that and then fill all the ones in between. Uh, so that way we have a rabbit post. Or since we know our forms are straight, we can go ahead and measure off of one side and keep that measurement going the whole way down. I think I'm just gonna go ahead and set my rabbit post and then set my intermediate post so that way I don't have to use uh, a tape measure every single time. So I'm gonna go to eyesight because ultimately that's easier without a string. Now we talked about setting posts by eye without a string, but we talked about it in a different video. That video is right here. The vinyl is a little bit harder to set than, than a chain link fence. You want to make sure that you're looking at every post and keeping it going straight. And you can see down your line. Now don't just check one side, also check your other side in case there is a little bit of a twist in that post. Sometimes your eyes can play tricks on you. Definitely why you want to check both sides. Hey, sir, could you keep it down over there? I'm trying to, trying to film. Another thing is, is not to be worried about setting the flow of the height of your fence right now. The two big things we've got to worry about is one, getting the post in the concrete, and two, getting that mow edge knocked down, getting the rocks knocked down so that we can come back after the posts are set and start troweling it, finishing it, edging it. And at that point in time, when we do that, we're gonna also set height coming down at the same time. One thing to keep in mind, water is your friend. The wetter this concrete is, you don't want it soup, okay? But the wetter it is, it is easier to get these posts on the ground. You're gonna get a workout. One of the biggest helpful hints I can give you when doing this, when you get to your gate or your corner, make sure, nope, don't, don't judge me. Make sure that your holes and your posts are going the right direction. I've done this. I've even set the post upside down. So make sure you don't get in that big of a hurry that you're paying attention to what you're doing. <sighs> make sure that when you leave this post, after you get on setting it, that you're level in line. So you're level with your line, so that way you're not throwing yourself off. But also make sure that you're level the other direction too. Just in case when you come back, that concrete's already hard and all you have to do is go up or down with your height. When we pour the concrete for our vinyl fence, we try to stay at about a four, more so on the five side of a slump. So imagine a cone, right? So they take a cone and they fill the cone and they take a plate over the cone and they turn the cone over like this and they release the cone and then the concrete settles. And that's called a slump test of your concrete to see how much, how much that settles is the slump that you got. So if you settle five inches, you have a five slump. And that's what we're looking for. I'd like to thank my producer for this, this nice film set that we got going on right now, which is 
Nick Ryan and Mark Olson. You know, we do what we can. We don't get thanked very often. You guys think it's just them. It's just them showing you how it's done. You know, there's others of us out here freezing to death too. Thank you for that shout out, Dan. Very kind, very kind. You always gotta thank your producer. So Andrew over there, he's putting the concrete in the holes and in the form. He's doing a good job, but he's leaving it pretty rocky and rough. Now the con man over here, he's coming behind taking care of all of Andrew's dirty work that Andrew doesn't want to do. Troweling it nice, finished smooth. He's taking his trowel and he's screeding it while he's going and then he's troweling it smooth, rough smooth, because as soon as we get done setting the post, we'll have enough time to come back through and do our edging and do our final smoothness and then do our broom. No matter how dirty the job is, everybody has to help out. These wheelbarrows, we've, we've bragged them up. We've said everything that we possibly could say that's good about them. It's like the Cadillac of all wheelbarrows. Pace yourself. Don't bite off more than you can chew. Even though the truck can hold 10 yards, cut that load in half and make sure that you know, you're, not, you're not overworking yourself. You're giving yourself plenty of time to get that, that mow curb finished, all your posts set and then take on your second truck. Maybe do a morning pour and an afternoon pour and just make sure not to get, let the concrete get away from you. Once it flashes, you gotta get, you gotta get going pretty hard. When it starts to flash, it's, uh, it's starting to get hard and it's getting away from you to the point where you can't really work it too much anymore. Today is a cooler day, so definitely if you're gonna do something like this, go for a cooler day or go for a morning pour. If you're gonna go for mid-afternoon, uh, say 75 degree weather, you know, your concrete's gonna start curing a lot faster because it's gonna get hotter, your temperatures are good. Don't get caught up on the small details. Don't, don't sit there and focus on one area trying to get it perfect. Because if you're focusing too much on one area, the stuff in front of you is gonna get worse. Once your concrete's here, get on it. Don't let a whole bunch of time go. I'm gonna say between now and when you first put it in here to about an hour, you wanna be done with everything that's behind you. The other thing you can do is, uh, I know Dayton Superior makes a product to the point where you can apply it to the surf so that we have a longer, works, uh, longer work time. We use some of that stuff kind of sometimes, but today um, we just didn't think it was too necessary. Do the thing here, do the thing there. Show you a thing or two over there, show you a thing or two over here. But first we're gonna show you a thing or two over here. Now that we have screeded our mow edge and we have troweled it one time, the guys are coming back through. They're gonna put the bull nose edge on it, the rounded corner. We need to go ahead and set the height of our fence. We're gonna set pretty close to the concrete. We're gonna set about within an inch is what we're looking for. We can even go a little bit lower than that. We can go all the way down to half an inch. I like to see across the top of the post to see what the fence is doing. Obviously here we're gonna shoot flat for a little bit and then we're gonna do a grade change up. We're gonna go to this one right here. And we need to tap it down. Ooh, tool time. That's a beater block. It's a hard plastic block. What it is intended for is to sit on top of the post just like that, so that when you need to tap your post going down on the ground or in the concrete, you're actually tapping on the block and not the post, risking cracking out your post. We're about a half inch there. We're gonna tap this one down too. Right now, we're treating top of concrete as the ground. That distance is our gap. That's where, That would be our air gap between bottom of fence and top of concrete, which since we're on top of concrete, we don't need a huge air gap. Whatever my concrete does is what the fence is gonna do. Is we already took the average of the ground with setting the forms. So now that we have a mow curb, we're gonna follow that mow curb. This thing is really nice because it allows me to take a big nice whack at it without having to worry about damaging that post. I'm sure that I did knock a lot of these out of plumb and they're a little bit crooked, but right now we're gonna go through, we're gonna establish height and then we're gonna get everything back in line as well at the same time. If we were shooting straight flat, we, our fence would look like this, nice and flat across the top. But we do have that elevation change at the very end of the fence. 
We just want to smooth that out a little bit. I just want to lightly tap it. So when you're on an elevation change, we're gonna have our true half inch gap right here or whatever we're gonna set. But on the back side of this post, because we're at an angle, you gotta remember our post is level. So we're gonna come out of the back side of the post at a smaller gap. Right now, all I'm trying to do is figure out how much rise is in this. So now that we have those all established and set, we're just gonna go back through we're gonna make sure everything's plumb and level and everything's all in line. When I do go back through and I plumb everything up from side to side, I do pay attention to my level, but I also do pay more attention to the, the faces of my post. So I care about this face and this face. So that way if I see a discrepancy in my fence line, I can go back and take care of it. Oh yeah, we gotta show you how to broom the concrete. Just take a broom. Just out there and start sweeping it. Let me make sure that my makeup is good. I gotta go back to my dressing room. Just kidding. <laughs> I keep on telling you about brewing the concrete. If we leave it nice and smooth like it is when it's wet, it's gonna get super, super slippery. And just to hide any blemishes, we're gonna broom it. What are we gonna broom it with? Concrete broom. It's 12 inches long, about like only an inch wide. And you just take your hand and broom it. These bristles are a lot finer. They're not as coarse as like a, a house broom because you don't want to gouge the concrete out. So now, now to see if we're ready to broom, what we're going to do is we're going to do a finger test. So I can put a little bit of pressure on it. There's a little bit of resistance there where my finger doesn't go sinking through. So I'm going to say that we're ready to broom. We're going to drag it to us. We're not going to apply a ton of pressure. Just lightly just drag it. So that way you get those nice lines in your concrete. We'll see what happens when we apply too much pressure. I mean, that doesn't look nearly as nice because your bristles went into your concrete too far and then you started exposing that sand. We don't really want to expose that sand. We just want to uh, have some nice fine brush strokes in there. See, I did that just for you. I ruined the concrete. It's okay, I already fixed it. So that brings this step to a close. Uh, we got our concrete poured, we got our concrete finished, edge, troweled, um, and now we have it broomed. So that brings this day to a close. When we come back, we'll install the fence. We will have taken all of our inside and inside post measurements. We're gonna add three inches and have our guys route all the fence material for us and pre-cut it. So. Until tomorrow.